I just wanted to get your brain back in the mode after a weekend of thinking in exponential logs, trying to turn back and forth between them, and also remembering some of your log laws. So actually, whether you got to the end of those four questions is less interesting to me uh, than whether you actually engaged with them and were able to pull on those neurons that have all that stuff in there, because we're going to need that big time today. Okay, Let's have a look from the top, and we'll go through these relatively quickly, because I think most of you are getting a sense of it now. When you've got a question like 3 to the power of some unknown number, and then it equals a number that's not like a nice neat power. Like if the right hand side said 9, 3 to the power of something is 9, you could instantly say, oh, that's 3 squared equals 9, right? Or if it were 27 or 81, if it were a nice number, but I deliberately gave you a gross number because that's where our knowledge of logs and exponentials can actually help. So I can rewrite this first equation in a form that makes k the subject, makes k equal something, and then I can work out what that is. How do I do that? How do I rewrite it? Yeah, go ahead, Swing. Uh, k equals 2, uh, log 3, uh, log base 3, and uh, 100. Cool. There you go, nailed it. So what we've done is, same numbers, k, 3, 100, we just rearranged it, and Swang's put them all in exactly the right spots. Now, this is true, and it's better because now I've got a k equals, but I, I need to change the base because I don't have a base 3 button on my calculator. I've got a base 10 button, got a base E button, either of them is fine. How do I actually change the base. You can use your reference sheet there. Yeah, go ahead, Kerry. Do you want to tell us what? Yeah? Um, can, can you just go log base 10, 100 over log base 10, 3? Log base 10 of 100 divided by log base 10 of 3. Are we happy with that? Yeah. Did I check out? It does. Uh, and you could have done base E, or you could have done base 5, or any base you like, as so long as it's the same on the top of the bottom. This is good because the calculator's got this button. So long as your 100 and your 3 are in the right spots. And conveniently, at least the way I remembered it is, in the original expression, the 100 is on the top, so it's going to end up on the top. So, Randy, have a question. Um, will you lose marks if you don't put the 10? Will you lose marks if, for example, you wrote this? Yeah. Is this what you're asking? Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> um, whenever I get asked a question about like, will I lose marks or will I get marks for whatever, right? I always hesitate because um, I can't always, I, in most cases, I can't give like a, oh, this is always what will happen, right? Because it sort of depends on how much is the question worth, what's the question really assessing. Is this like the whole question or is this on the way to doing some other thing? Like is this part of it, a small part of it, right? My initial instinct to say, actually, that's probably fine because Sometimes you see it written there. In fact, normally if you see it written in a question or in a textbook, this, right? What base do you think is implied? There has to be a base. What do you think the base is? D. Now, in a textbook or in a test, this is sneaky, right? Pretty much anywhere, except for one exception I will tell you in a second, um, anywhere you see it with no base, it's implying A. Which I know is a bit weird because there is a single place, a place you use a lot, that doesn't mean that. Where's the place that doesn't mean that? You've got it right in front of you. Calculator. It's your calculator. We've talked about this before, but I'll refresh your memory. Why is it that on your calculator, it's actually back to what we were suggesting before. Why is our calculator say L-O-G with no base, it's base 10? It's because your calculator is a particular kind of calculator. Do you remember All what kind? It's a scientific calculator. Scientific calculators are useful for what kind of notation? Scientific. scientific notation, which has a base of 10. Okay, so that's why it's there. The reason why I think it's sort of fine either way is because, well, if it's the same base on the top and the bottom, that's what makes change of base law work. Did someone get a number out of this, by the way? Sorry, I was... Oh, you, were you going to ask another question? Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, so if 4. it is 19. just... 4.19. Yeah, go ahead, Will. If it is just log, do we have to assume that it is base E? So I'll, I'll just, just for clarity, just for clarity, I'll say it one more time. Anywhere in the world... When we're doing maths and you see LOG with no base, right? Except on your calculator, it means base E. Um, it's part of why, you know, we actually we do differentiation with exponentials, exponentials and logs, and we focus on E and not other bases because that's where all the interesting maths kind of happens, right? So we get to other bases as a separate thing, which is what we're doing today, but everywhere else you can assume it's E. Okay, and don't forget, by the way, I asked you to approximate. Um, please say that you do, because it isn't actually exactly 4.19, it's roughly. Okay, happy times. Can we have a look at the second one? We should be able to do this a bit quicker, because you sort of used the same skill that we used before. We can say again. Yeah, sort of, I went from a, an exponential equation to a log equation here, and I want to go in the opposite direction. So, what should I write first? Log base. 
Okay, so I've got the question. Once I've written the question, yep. How do I how do I start to reform that? K equals. Where what am I going to put it there? Mo, go ahead. Four to the power of two and a half, which you could pop straight into your calculator. Um, hopefully, it gives you a number, but I'm just going to say as well that um, hopefully. Your brain also has your index laws in there as well, and these, this, you don't even need a calculator for all this. I mean, your calculator is nice to confirm it, but 4 squared, of course, is 16, and 4 to the power of a half, that's actually 4 to the power of a half. What does it mean when you've got a fraction in the index? That's a square root, isn't it? So that's actually um, the square root of 4, which is 2, which gave you the answer your calculator probably already told you, which was 32. Is that okay? Can I just quickly, rather than worry about the working for these, can I just get the answers for 3 and 4, just so we can confirm and I can see if anyone's got problems? Edison, what have you got for 3? 1.76. Can I please get some agreement or disagreement on that? Okay, I've got some nods. Great. Aditi, do you want to give me the last one? 3.32. Are we also similarly happily? Happily with that? Yep. Okay. And by the way, does it fit? Does it fit? Or do we have it? No, do we have different yeah, decimal? Yeah. 3.16? Hold on, that's a bit off. No, I think it's that. Who got 3.32? Couple of hands, a <laughs> few hands, okay. So we're going to have to sort this out. Um, who got 3.16? I want to see the hands again. Okay, Shimbaba, do you want to, can we walk through how you did it? Can you walk us through some working? Uh, okay, so the power of the screw is equal to 10. Three point three two or three point one six. I'm interested. People who got the other answer, did you have this as a line of working? Because I feel like this should give us something unambiguous out of the calculator. Have we checked it again? Yeah, are you which are you? Three point one six. We're happy. Okay, so we'll, we'll get rid of this. I'm interested where three point three two came from. Now I'm like, is that just a snafu of calculator? But my, your fingers are too stubby for this calculator. Okay, you're not getting it when you put it in the square root of ten. Is this what you're wondering about? You're wondering how we got to the square root of 10. Okay, let's, um, let's wind back for a second. So Shambhavi said k squared equals 10. Are we happy with that line? Yeah. Yes, no? Yeah. You're like kind of, you're looking really, you're like, you're not impressed. Okay, so let's have a look. Here, we're converting a log equation into an exponential, right? The way that I remember it is always that the base down here comes from the base over here. When you go back and forth between an exponential and a log, the bases will stay the same. So you get base here, base here. Uh, base here turns into this base over here. And then even though it's sort of a crass way of thinking about it, all the rest of the numbers, they just kind of swap sides. You see how k and 10 are together in the log equation? Well, k and 2 will be together in the exponential equation. Sophie, did you want to ask a question? Uh, I kind of did it like a completely different way, but yeah. I got the same answer. You got this as well? Can you tell me, talk me through, let me get another color. Oh, they're over here. Can you talk me through how you did it? Um, well, instead of like converting it using that law that we were using before, mm -hmm. I just went straight to changing the base. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got log 10, 10 equals 2 log 10k. Pause for a second, let me catch up with you. Is that what you just said? That's on your left hand equals side? Two. Equals 2. Okay, cool, go ahead. Um, and then I just literally just put that down and just solved this, like got rid of that um, denominator. So I got log 10, 10 equals 2 log. 10k, and then just divided the other side by 2 to just get log 10k by itself, and then took the log from that side, and then used that log that we were using earlier. So then I got 10 half log 10, wait, sorry, <laughs> 10 to the power of half log 10, 10 equals k. Okay, so. Let me see if I'm understanding Sophie right. What she's done here, this fraction is the same change of base law we used right at the top. Yeah, do you remember that right from the beginning? So she's chosen 10. It's actually a really good choice because I gave you a number which is on your calculator. When she goes through and divides through by 2, that's going to end up up in the power just like we did here. Okay, But thankfully, log base something of something Go back, this is like a basic log law, right? Log base 5 of 5, or log base 800 of 800, what's that equal to? One. That's 1, isn't it? So that's 10 to the power of a half equals k, which actually is equivalent to this, which is why we get the same answer 
that we got before, even though it was quite a different path, okay? <laughs> Paper one, so I'm pretty happy with that. Well done, okay. <laughs>